In this video, you will get a closer view on the operational attribute syntax of a class. You can see the building plan of the attribute syntax. Just follow the directed vertices from the left to the right. The first aspect is visibility. As you can see in the building plan, you can also skip it if it's not needed. There are four possibilities to show the visibility of an attribute. If you want the visibility to be public, everybody of the system can see it. Publicity is shown by a plus. The minus means that the attribute is private and only the object it itself is permitted to access the attribute. For example, you have the class person with the private attribute date of birth. The instance of the class, which is of course an object, can access this attribute and no other object can do so. The protected attribute, modeled by the hash, can only be seen by the class itself and their subclasses. The package attribute can be accessed by classes that are in the same package and is shown as a swung dash. The package attribute will be used platform dependently, for example, the package concept in Java. The second optional step is to show that the attribute is derived from other attributes. In this case, you draw a slash in front of the name of the attribute. Of course, the most minimalistic attribute consists only of a name. Usually, the name is written in lowercase. You can see the attribute person's number is underlined. It means that the attribute is exactly the same for each object. This is a so-called class attribute or class operation. It is comparable with the static concept in Java. The concept of class attributes or class operation is normally used for constants or for counters for the number of instances of a class. The attribute type can consist of a user-defined class or a data type. The predefined primitive data type boolean, integer, unlimited, natural and string are available without modeling them explicitly. You can model new primitive types like float or data types like data. Another important case is the enumeration, where you define a set of possible answers. The default number of values that an attribute may contain is 1. If you want to change that, you can set a minimum and a maximum number of values. The star means that there is no maximum number. You can set a default value for the type you have specified, for example, the password is set to uh, pw123 for each instance of the class person. The last section of the building plan is the optional properties, setting between curly brackets. The predefined properties are read-only, unique, non-unique, ordered and unordered. Read-only is the right property if the value cannot be changed. Unique means that there are no duplicates. If duplicates are permitted, you can define the property as non-unique. The values can be defined as ordered or unordered. If the attribute specification should be set, then it needs the properties unordered and unique. For a multiset, the attribute specification should be unordered and non-unique. For an order set, ordered and unique and for a list, ordered and non-unique. Now we will take a closer look at the operation syntax. The visibility is the same as an attribute syntax, followed by the name. These two are the beginning of the construction plan. After that, there are round brackets, which can be filled with parameters separate by a comma. The parameters need their own construction plan, as you can see in the bottom of the slide. The in 
stands for an input parameter and is used when a value is expected from this parameter. The out is used for the output parameter which holds the adopted new value of the operation. In out combines input and output parameter. After the direction of the parameter, you specify the name of the parameter type. If you want to specify an optional type, you need a colon in front of it. Afterwards, you can model the optional multiplicity and, last but not least, put the optional properties in between swung brackets separate with, by a comma. Once you have defined the optional parameter correctly and have put the closed brackets, you can optional specify the return type of the operation with a colon in front of it. The last optional building block is again the property, which is of the same syntax as the property of the attribute.